Hello everyone, my name is Anthony and I am the owner of BNC Woodworking. Today we're going to learn how to build these farmhouse end tables. Hope you enjoy, let's get to building. So first you're going to want to lay out all your pieces that you have cut. Uh, there will be build plans available for all the cut lists and then I have this cut list built so that way it kind of saves you time and money and if you'd like to purchase those they'll be available in my Etsy store. So. I'll be building this out of cherry and poplar today. It is a sale item, I'm not paid by YouTube yet. So uh, you can do it with just pine one buys. I would have gone and bought those, but like I said, I'm not getting paid to do this. So all you need is a few one by sixes or one by eights and you can knock out these tables. It's gonna cost you probably $25 a table. The first thing I like to do is glue up my tops and bottom shelf. And that gives the glue some time to set while you're working on the frame so that way you can sand it and it'll speed up your process. So what you're going to want to do is just kind of test fit your tabletop first. Once you get a test fit, you're just looking for good joints and to make sure that your grains are alternating. That way it'll help fight the warping. So right now I'm just checking to see if this is the way I want it. It looks pretty good like this. So I'm going to take a pencil and mark it. And by mark it, I just mean we're gonna write numbers on which order we want them to go in. That way, if we have to move it before glue up or anything like that, we just know exactly where they're gonna be. Side note, just make sure when you do your tops and your bottom shelf, I like to cut everything a little bit big. That way I have room to trim it down after the glue up. Now your basic edge joint is gonna work just fine here. So you just have to glue along the edge here before you clamp up. And you wanna make sure you get good coverage on your edges to make sure you get good glue up. And this also helps seal any gaps if there might be any, so that it looks a little bit better in the finished product. And you can use a, a glue spreader or something like that. I'm using the patented BNC woodworking glue spreader right here. So this gets the job done. And then you just need a little rag. And then all you have to do is lay it down and clamp them together and set it off to the side for it to dry. And now you just have to repeat that process with the bottom shelf. So we're going to do a quick time lapse on that. Okay, so for the rest of the build, I'm going to be putting this together with dowel joinery. So if you want to use pocket holes, you can use pocket holes. You can use mortise and tenon, anything you want to. If anybody needs a video on how to use pocket holes, I have some on my TikTok. Feel free to hop over there and check that out. Moving forward, I'll be referring to the, this is the front and the back and where the X's are as the sides. So we're gonna assemble the sides first. So you'll just need to hold, take out two legs and two of your side supports. You're gonna wanna measure a line three quarters of an inch up from the bottom of the leg on the inside and where you're gonna mount. If you have one of these multi-squares, it's easy. You can just set it at three quarters. And then if you're doing a bunch of tables, you don't have to reset it. You can just mark lines on all of your legs and go from there. Now for dowel joinery, you're just gonna wanna line up your tops nice and flush. And then you can just eyeball a line in the middle here using that jig I got. So I just draw a line right across here. And I'm gonna mark this one and one. That way it doesn't get messed up down the road. And then you come over and you align your other side. And you do the same thing, but this time I'm just gonna write two and two. Then you switch it around to the bottom and you line up your piece of that line you drew right there, the bottom line. And then you do the same thing. Just draw a line there, eyeball it, but this one's gonna be three and three. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. We'll line it up, draw a line, do four and four. That way all of our joints line up. That way if it's not exact, we get right where we wanna be with the joinery jig. Now how this particular jig works, this one's made for three quarter inch stock, which is what we're working with, three quarter inch thickness. So all you have to do on this one is line it up, the one line, center line, since we're doing two, line it up on that line you just drew, clamp it down, and then drill your holes out. Watch out camera. Now there is a stop ring on here that you're gonna wanna set up. The directions for how to run this jig are with it, so it's super easy. Uh, 
I always like to clean the bit out like that and then go back in again. It'll help clear out the any debris that's in the hole or loose spots that'll mess your dowel up going in. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on every line that I drew on all of the joints and then we'll get back to it. Be intimidated by the dowel jig. It's super easy. It's a lot cheaper to get into than a pocket hole jig would be in most cases. But the pocket hole, you don't need as many clamps. So I guess it's a trade off. So now I like to do a quick dry fit. Just kind of get everything going, make sure that way it fits good. You always want to do two dowels. And that's for the fact, because if you just do one, the joint can roll on you. If you do two, it'll keep the joint from rolling. So let's do a quick dry fit, make sure everything lines up the way we want it to. All right, so dry fit isn't perfect. There's a couple little lips right here and here on the faces. That's okay, because those will sand out. And having a little bit of a proud surface on the face actually is good, because it'll help you sand out a smoother looking joint in the end. So with dowels, you're gonna wanna put a little bit of glue in the holes, so the dowels are glued in there also. And then you're gonna put it around the top two where the board's gonna go. So we'll just do that real quick. And then once you get it doweled in and glued, you just want to put clamps on it. Quick. And you can move the joints a little bit while you put clamps on there. Once that's glued, go ahead and set it off to the side and do the other side. Okay, so now that we have both sides clamped up and ready to go, you'll see that I've drawn these lines around it. They're a half inch in from this side. Because you'll notice in the plans, there's no angles on the X pieces. And that's because if you made any mistakes on the setup here, you can make up for it to save on gaps. Okay, so now what you wanna do is pick this up, put that board underneath there, take some scraps, help level off the things so it's not rocking back and forth on you. Just level it off a little bit like that. And then you can take your board that you have cut for your X and line it up with the lines that you put on there. So it's in the corners, just like that. And then all you gotta do is trace you a line on the back of that. And then head over to your saw and you cut that angle. Now you see, we almost have a perfect fit. Then what we'll do now is take another one and we'll line it up on the lines again, going crossways. And this time we're gonna draw lines right across the middle of the other X. This is gonna help us align the smaller pieces for the X. You could do a half lap here, but this is decorative. And what we're gonna do is gonna be more than sturdy enough. So that's gonna give us a line right here. So that way we know where the middle is when we go to line up the next pieces. Remember this angle and go back and cut eight little things. So this angle was 26 degrees for me. So I'm gonna cut an angle at 26 degrees and then make a little block. And you'll see why in a minute. These little stops here that we just made are gonna fit in the corners here when we go to clamp it up and you can clamp like that and it'll get a good glue, glue clamp on you there now we're going to go ahead and glue these up real quick this first one it'll make it easier for cutting next one don't worry about gobbing around there especially if this is paint grade it's going to help you seal up that joint and get a good butt joint uh because butt joints aren't the strongest in the first place so really gob on that glue don't be afraid of it and it'll help you down the road and then just go ahead and have it up on your scraps again so you can work underneath it. And you got your little blocks we just made here. And all you gotta do is take your clamp, put it on top of that, clamp it down a little bit on that side. Don't clamp too hard yet because you wanna get some pressure going both ways here. And then once you get it clamped down right there, you'll see it's pressing the glue out. Now you got everything flush. Now that's done. That first part's clamped. Now you can slide another X piece that you have cut up underneath there. You don't want to go all the way through. I like to do one at a time. It's a little more time consuming, but it's more accurate and then you have a better finished product. So sometimes taking your time is definitely worth it. So what we'll do is get it lined up where we want it and then we'll trace our lines and go cut it at the miter saw. You could cut this with a circular saw if you do not have a miter saw. So don't be worried if you don't have one. 
Now let's do a quick test fit. Don't glue this one yet. Just test fit it, see if you got it good or you're happy with the joint. Uh, it looks like I need to go trim a little bit off this one. Now that I'm happy with the test fit on that one, let's go up and do the same thing on this side. Just line it up, trace your lines, and then cut it. And then just do like we did on the other one. You're just gonna take your glue, be, you know, use it good. Don't be afraid of it. And then you're just gonna pop it in and clamp it. And here's a closer look on how I have it clamped. And we set it off to the side and do the same for the other. You could pin nail those if you wanted to. Uh, they're not gonna add much strength, pin nails, to be honest with you. So, like I said, it's just decorative. I, I did have them come apart before, uh, but that was with a different method of clamping and I didn't get a good glue joint. Okay, so while we're waiting on those to dry our frames, whatever glue you used, your top should be dry at this point, at least dry enough to work with. So let's sand this down. So what I like to do first is take an old chisel. This thing's dull. Uh, it's not gonna gouge the wood because if you use a sharp one, it's gonna gouge the wood. So I don't like to wipe off the squeeze out because then it gets spread easier. So I just wait till it's pretty much dry and then just scrape it off a little bit with a chisel like that. And then what we're gonna do is this on both sides. And we're gonna sand this down to 80 grit. Now remember, we cut it a little bit long and a little wide, and we're gonna trim it down to size after we sand it to 80 grit. And I like to do that just in case there's some imperfections on an edge or something of that nature after I sand it down. I know what I can trim off and what I can't to get the best top possible. Now my favorite trick for sanding, because this is something you always wanna take your time on, is just taking a pencil and I just draw squiggly lines all over the place on this thing. This is every grit. And then sometimes I'll do the same grit twice, like on 80 right here, just so we get it nice and level. And then you only sand until the pencil lines are gone. And that's it. You don't wanna go any more than that. You just keep going back and forth. And if you have to keep sanding more, then you draw more pencil lines and it'll help you keep a nice flat surface the whole way through. All right, now that I got this side where I want it, I'm just gonna flip it over and do the same on the other side. All right, so in trimming down a tabletop, I like to take it down in even parts on the sides. So this is a little bit over, it's about a half inch over. So I'm gonna take a quarter inch off each side. So I'll take two passes on the table saw. As far as the ends, I wanna get rid of these knot holes because I don't like how those look. So I'm gonna take measurements to make sure that these knot holes get cut off. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom shelf, except for this one, we're not gonna to cut to size until after the frame's built. And you'll understand why later. That's how we're gonna make sure we account for wood expansion. A lot of people like to do the X's after they've already built the whole frame. I've learned that it's actually easier this way. So one, you can actually get a better lineup on your joints so they're not so much to sand. And right now with this laying on the table, it is much easier to sand all these joints smooth versus having it all put together and having to hold your sander at weird ways. So that's what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna do the same technique. We're just gonna draw lines everywhere and we're gonna sand this whole thing down to 80 grit. I'll do final sanding since it's paint grade only to 120, but we'll do that when it's put together. But as of right now, I like get to get it, all the rough sanding out of the way. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, once you get it all sanded, you're gonna wanna use your combination square here and do your three quarter inch line again from the bottom, that way we can line up our supports. Now we'll do the exact same thing that we did in the first couple steps where we line up on the edges and we'll draw a line for our dowel joinery. But like I said, you could use pocket holes and then you just clamp these down and you could just drill in your pocket holes if you wanted to. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, I'm not gonna video all that because that just seems like a waste of everybody's time. All right, so you can see now as the dowel joints. There's no pocket holes on the inside, so that makes it look cleaner. It does take longer, but I charge a little bit more for this style, and it looks pretty good. And the dowels really help keep it square. But with pocket holes, you wouldn't need to clamp it like this. So if you're short on clamps, pocket holes are the way to go. 
Okay, so I cut the bottom shelf to size off camera. Now, how much space you're gonna wanna leave is up to where you live or what time of year and everything. And I'll put notes in the plans on how all that comes into play and how to plan for that. So I'm just test fitting that and make sure it's where I want it. It's summertime here, so I don't want too big of a gap, but so I'm just test fitting it and it looks good. Now from this point, I'll dry fit the bottom shelf and the top. So I'll be using these small grooves that I cut with a biscuit joiner. If you don't have a biscuit joiner and you want to use Z clips, which I highly suggest, that's okay. I'll have in the plans other methods to cut this groove. You'll have to do it before assembly. But so we'll be using Z clips to just dry fit these. So all Z clip is, is this small little Z looking thing kind of. And what it does is it goes and mounts to the tabletop. And this allows for wood movement. So this will let it slide around instead of just screwing it straight to the frame. If you just screw it straight to the frame, you're gonna take a chance of having your table blow out on you and nobody wants that. So from here, you can really do anything. Uh, you just gotta finish sanding, everything's dry fit so we know it works. You gotta finish sanding your outside, whatever you're gonna paint or stain. And on the top, you could do anything. You router the edges, you could just leave it as is and just sand it. Same with the bottom shelf, just depends on what you want. So I have other videos out there on how to do that on TikTok. I'll be doing some shorts on how to use the Z clips a little bit better. This video was already getting pretty long, so I didn't want to carry on with it. And we'll do some other short videos on little details around the uh, table and what to do. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you were able to learn how to do this. Like I said, the plans will be on my Etsy page. I'm only gonna charge like five bucks for them. So not that much it'll save you a lot of time and hassle these are designed to save you money to sell for a cheaper price so you can have a door opener if you're starting a business or if you just want to do something cheap for a diy so thanks again as always have a great day